In this part of the course, you are given data and asked questions about the data. There may be no single right answer or right way to analyze the data. Uh, all I can do is give you examples and let you work with examples. This is perhaps the hardest part of the course because what I'm asking you to do is to synthesize your learning, bring it together, be able to operate it in analysis level and statistics. That's what statisticians do. Nobody comes up to you and says, hey, can you calculate the mean of this? Can you do a t-test on this? They come to you and they say, look, I ran a survey and here are my results. What does it mean? What you're looking at here is a survey done in a health science class in 2012 uh, relating to relationships and views on uh, the connection within a relationship. And I've got data for females and data for males who were in that particular class in 2012. Someone might say, what does it mean? All I've got is a pile of numbers. Are there differences? Where are the differences at? Which ones are unusual? Which ones are more typical? Now, this data is an odd set of data, but not unusual in statistics. It is a uh, Likert-type survey. It's technically uh, functioning at the interval level. There are no fractions. Strongly agree, some would agree, disagree. But in order to tease out any kind of meaning, as we often do in statistics, I'll go ahead and be looking at some of the averages involved. And so, uh, someone comes to me and says, I did this survey, Leland. What does it mean? Do I have a difference? Are men and women, do they have, do they have different attitudes towards um, the relationships that they're in? And, and where are those differences? And can I make some pretty charts or something of my data to see what they look like? Well... There's a couple of things we can probably do with this data, at least to look at it. One of the things probably that I go after pretty much pretty early in any analysis is I would certainly look at the mean for each of these particular questions just to see if, if all the means are the same, then all the means are the same, and that itself would be news. Now, the higher the number, the more strongly the students agree with the particular question asked. And I can then take these same means and dump them right down over here and get the means for them. Well, that's interesting, I guess. The means are all about uh, one, two point something. But I don't see a lot of, I can't tell what the differences might be. I don't know if those differences are significant in the different means. So I guess one of the first things to do would be to... Uh, after calculating a mean, I kind of want to know whether or not there's some meaningful difference in the means. There's different ways I could do this, but since everything is all lined up symmetrically, let me go ahead and look at the difference, the difference in the means. So maybe this one would be, uh, oh, it doesn't much matter which order we do it in. Take the man, woman's score minus the man's score. And so there are differences in the averages. I wonder which are the largest differences and, and where. You mostly negative, a lot of, I see a lot of negative scores, I see some. I wonder what the average of the average is here. Equals the average. I'm just curious. Now I'm just exploring the data. Doing some basic data exploration. What's the average of the average? So the average is 0 0.01. It's really close to zero. Zero would mean that the Two differences are, there's no difference in the differences. And so that would mean that there's no difference between the females and the males. At 0.01, that looks pretty small, that level of difference. That seems really small, these differences. But to know whether or not that's small, there's another number I could use. I could go after another number. Uh... And I'll probably label this in a moment, but uh, this is, let me grab this back. That's the average. So let me bring that back over here. That's not the other number, but that's the average for the females, overall average. 
Maybe I better put overall average. Overall average. All right. One of the things I want to see is well, how much variation is there in this difference data that I just calculated? And how does that relate? Okay, so the standard, the overall standard deviation, uh, the overall standard deviation is larger than the difference. So that's a, that's a useful thing to know. Why is that useful? This 0.29 here dwarfs the average difference of 0.01. That means that uh, the difference is much smaller than the standard deviation. Think about that. Remember the coefficient of variation? That's why I say this part of the course, you integrate stuff together. Take that standard deviation, not that one, take the standard deviation, get rid of those, those are in my way. Take the standard deviation and divide by the mean. And that gets your, uh, uh, your, um, your coefficient of, of uh, variation. Uh, early on, we looked at this. That's really large. Um, so the variation dwarfs the difference. That's what that means. By about 280%, the variation dwarfs the mean difference. So what that tells us is that the mean difference is indistinguishable from zero. I mean, the mean difference. That doesn't mean there aren't gender differences on individual questions, and that would be the next thing to kind of look at. But now that I've got that, I can begin to see where I should probably go. Although there's probably some statistical reasons to not go there. If I look at this mean, and I look at going up and down from that mean, I can tell whether or not, if I've got something that's mm, unusually large relative to this overall average, uh, that would be of some interest to to sort out. The average split, so why is that 0.29? What's driving, I want to see what's driving this particular number. That seems rather large. The standard deviation is 0.29. And these, it's in 18. Negative. Okay. This one and this one. There's some big drivers here. This one is 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 a large positive value. And this one is a large negative value. Oh, this one's Okay. I'm starting to tease out which of these are having the biggest effect on, on the system. And in fact, what I can do... Let me go ahead and try to sort these out. This is a difference in the mean, so I'm going to see if I can. This is good. See if this works. Now, my point here is there isn't one right thing to do. I'm playing at this point, in a sense, looking through the data to see what whether I can find something that might be different. Then we put it descending. It's had a changing effect on this. I need to look at why that number's changed. That number shouldn't have changed on me. Uh, but a difference in the means isn't holding steady. All right, let me undo that. I was worried about that. I'm going back to, I done did that. I'm looking, the standard deviation should not be changing because I changed the order. So I, and, and, and that I know I, uh, of course, I can't do it this way. I have to be very careful. And these are the things you learn as you go. I can't sort this column because it's tied back to this and I didn't sort that. So to do this, oh, it's just going to be tricky. I'm going to have to get really fancy here for a moment. I'm going to copy this and then edit, paste special, values only. 
I've turned them from a formula to a value. Now I'm going to do that same operation that I just did and hope that everything stays the same. So it's like riding a bicycle. What's the right way to do it? Uh, stay on it and don't fall off. In verse, this stayed the same. My standard deviation stayed 0.29. My mean stayed the same. So this time I did not mess up my data. Last time I messed up my data. And now I have them in order from most positive to most negative by the difference in the means. But I don't yet. Why? We'll try that one more time. That didn't, that didn't look right. Data. Sort range. Data set a row. Oh, sorry. I forgot to set this. You have to pay attention to all the details. Okay, that's the, the mean held. The standard deviation held. I haven't messed up my data. This I had accidentally sorted just in column A. Now I've got it sorted from the largest value to the smallest value. The values close to zero right in here are the values for which the men and women most agree. They, these here in the middle. Let me see. This is the split across the zero point right now. That's where agreement, there's a maximum level of agreement. And so, because the number, the difference is the smallest. Here the women are averaging 2.56 on this, and uh, the men are, and that's, that's question 14, the men were averaging 2.55. So, in the middle here, the men and the women agree. Both the men and the women who are surveyed said if they had to choose between living in poverty or living without love, they would choose to love in poverty. And they also closely agree on each of us has our one and only somewhere out there if only we can find that person. So there's good agreement there. At the ends are the where the disagreement lies here and here. On this end, uh, let's give it some. On this end, the, the women... Are, are, are pulling up a higher mean. The means are higher for the women than for the men. And remember, in this, higher means more strongly agree. So the women, more often than the men, will say, you're a sucker if you fall in love with someone who has no money, and I am able to function very well without someone loving me. So that's an area in which women agree with the statement more often than men in this particular sample and class. And down here at the other end is the other side of this. Uh, let's color that something. Doesn't matter what we color it. These are the ones where they're the most negative. Now, the way I subtracted, that means that the men, so for example, number seven. On number seven, the men had an average of about, looks like 255. And for the uh, women, it was 2.125. So the women were lower than the men. And that's the negative score. So this is an area where the men feel more strongly than the women. As soon as someone thinks you love them, that person will start to take advantage of you. So men agree with that statement more strongly than women did. And once you find your one and only, you'll never be attracted to anyone else. This is the area where the men had the strongest agreement differential from the women. So the, the men... The men uh, more strongly uh, uh, felt that once you find your one and only, you'll never feel attracted to anyone else. The women uh, were lower. They have less agreement with that. And so that's an area where the women did not, and the men do not as strongly agree with each other, where the, the, um, the men more strongly agree with that statement than the women. So we started to get some meaning out of the data in this particular case. I'm not sure one could turn this data into a particularly uh, useful um, uh, chart of any particular type. I doubt this will turn out to have any meaningful outlier information that we can dredge up. These difference in the means or the means, probably not uh, for these two sets of questions. But um, 
So I don't think there would be a chart that I could put in that might be particularly meaningful. Um, it could do some kind of distributions, but I suppose what one... Yeah, if I... If someone said, well, make a chart out of it, I guess what I'd be tempted to try to do might be to look and see if there's a distributional difference between the two distributions. And by that I mean what I would go at, what I might go after um, is uh, a histogram at the uh, interval level. The answers can be one, two, or three. And I could uh, go after the females. Now, my problem here is there's going to be different sample sizes. So that might not... I'm going to have to go to a relative frequency before I'm done in order to make sense out of this. Oops. Yeah, it's come time to get into some editing holes. Might have to hand type it. So that's the females. Let's do the same for the males. And now I'm just really exploring. Now the sample sizes are different. So that's going to cause me some headaches. But I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute. I can go to relative frequency to get around that particular issue. To get to relative frequency, I'm going to have to get the sum of those and the sum of the males. I can just fill across to do that. And now I can do the female relative frequency over here and the male relative frequency over here. Uh, these charts will be, won't be comparable because the total sample size is smaller. I'll be looking at whether there's a distributional difference in the answers of the one, two, or three, the agreements. And so I can take this and divide by this, but I've got to lock that seven. Yep, yep, yep. Same thing here, but I think that'll work. Let's try it. Uh, let's check this. 23, yes, by 142. So these are relative frequencies now over here. And uh, I'm going to go in here and insert one left, grab these guys, because they're going to help this chart make some sense. And I don't want a stack column chart. If I just want, oh, that's not going to work either. Not a smooth line chart, it is. No. Um, where are my orders here? My in columns are. Let me see. Ah, there we go. I've got these on the bottom now. Uh, this should be a column chart of some kind. Uh, maybe the other way. No, that doesn't make sense now. There. That's where I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, I do want to have a those labels up here. Ah, there we go. We're getting there. I use usual ones left. I'm kind of discovering my way forward. So I've got the women and the male, and I can see that, and they're controlled for sample size by using the relative frequency. These will add up to one so they're on the same scale the women are more likely to answer strongly agree than the men the men are more likely to say somewhat agree and the women are to so the women more often than the men go for the extremer answers if you will the strongly agree or disagree men more often are in the middle here that's what this column here is 33%. It's a small difference, but the men are more often to be found in the middle when answering these questions. 
and the uh, the women are more often than the men, relative to the men, more often found at the two ends of the spectrum, strongly agree or disagree. So uh, that that's somewhat interesting. The men are look like they're tending towards more middle values. They're more often selecting two uh, than the women who are more often selecting threes and ones on a relative basis, on a relative basis. So now I have something I can talk about. I probably want to write it up, put it into a PowerPoint. This is just the beginning. This is just the analysis. Now I've got to turn it into something pretty. But I can now talk about areas in which uh, the women more strongly agree with, with a statement, the areas in which uh, the men more strongly agree, the areas in which the two sides basically agree in one form or another. Um, and so I can begin to tease out some meaning into the survey other than just staring at a pile of numbers that has no meaning. And that's what chapter 12 is about. Working with data, trying to figure out what the data is about. Now this is complex. For every set of data, you're going to have to learn something about the topic you're looking at. So you can understand what the data is, is about. Now if it's about plastic amphipods or other things, you'll need to know what the ha those are so you'll begin to have an idea of where you might go. But exactly where one might go or can go or should go, that's really up to, to you. You're trying to then tell an audience something that some, uh, pull some meaning out of the data. That's the point to this. Um, uh, I, uh, this is interesting to some extent. You can sit there and dissect why does it come out this way. Um, but uh, and maybe this is just a reflection of young students in a health science class at a college. Um, I suspect this this number seven. The men, remember, have more, more strongly agreed with this. Once you find your one and only, you'll never feel attracted to anyone else. Um, yeah. If you're hoping that that happens, you're setting yourself up for disappointment in life. Um, if if that was true, then there would there would be a well. I think about it for a while. That does that. Uh, the number of relationships that run into problems suggests that the men are overly optimistic on this statement. Um, and. It's interesting that the women more often agree with number nine and number four, for that matter, which goes along with it. The women are much more independent than the, the men. Men seem to be much more needy in terms of needing someone to love them and needing someone to love. That's interesting. As, um, the, the men are the needier ones. Now, this was a health science survey done in 2012. Uh, on the national campus of a mix of students from a, uh, in, in a typical class. So this is just how they're answering them. And so on this particular set of questions here and here, the women are, are um, they do seem to be slightly more independent than the men. That's surprising. That's a result you could share. So whatever you're dealing with, each, each of these examples during this last part of the course is different. They're each unique and they're each different. They each tell different stories. You're trying to tell the story of the data. What is the data telling us? What is the story? There isn't necessarily one right answer, and that's why I've done a kind of rambling approach to this myself. I look at it and start trying to figure it out. This is data I haven't looked at in eight years. I've forgotten what it was I might have done or didn't do back then. It doesn't look like I did much of anything with it. I, I kept the data, but I didn't actually do anything with it after that. Now, that doesn't mean that what I did here is the right answer to 12.1 or 12.2 or 12.3. Each problem is unique. I think of it almost as if it's an, a, a game, a sport. You have a bunch of tools. You don't know which tools you might need to dig out, but you know you're going to need some tools to get the job done. The mean is a good thing to look at usually. Not always, but usually. Standard deviations tell you about the spread in the data. 
This one told me that the spread is much bigger than the mean. In fact, the mean of the means is very close to zero. That means that overall, the men and the women generally agree. There's just some differences in the nuance on some of the questions. And these differences are not large because they're only slightly bigger than the standard deviation. There is some propensity of the men to answer two more often than the women. And that's the way it is. I don't, I don't know what, what, if anything, that means. So that's what the chapter 12 is about, exploring data and trying to figure out the story the data is trying to tell us. Piles of numbers never tell anybody anything. Piles of numbers that are analyzed, they tell us the story. And that's what you're trying to do. In 12.1, the story of the amphipods, or whatever the example might be uh, for 12.1. It may vary. But 12.2, you've got data, prob some guiding questions. What does the data tell us? These are the sort of things you can work on. Do try to turn in your work early if you can. You can take a look at it. If you've, if I feel you've really missed something, or some, something could be improved, I'll send it back to you and say, you probably should look at this or take a look at that. Um, do, don't wait till the end to get it in, and certainly don't, don't try to do these late because you'll do much better if they come in early. Now, this first one is done in a spreadsheet, as I've done here. But the ones after it, you'll need to produce a presentation in slides uh, on your data. You'll have to put that together. You'll submit that. And uh, experimentally, I'll, we'll actually try having you share your presentation to me in, a, in that last one, if, if it works. It's a Definitely a pilot test, but a, a chance to zoom that one to me to practice doing a presentation on Zoom, which is a basic business skill these days, business and education, the ability, the ability to deliver a presentation via, via Zoom. And we'll have, you'll see in the calendar if you look, some Zoom practice days, and I'll get uh, the URLs out to you of how to Getting to get a hold of me, I'll send that out through Schoology. I'll drop you a message with my Zoom room so you can come in and practice Zooming. We'll see how that goes, but I'd like to begin to get you used to the idea of presenting via Zoom because it is a basic skill in this day and age. Doing a presentation by a distance means, uh, even beyond the pandemic, that it will be a skill that will be useful. Uh, if you have questions, as always, please ask.